Hello, welcome to Centennial Hall, room 3204. I'm going to give you a rundown on how the audio video system works in here. Up at our teacher station, we have our touch panel. It's going to control just about everything we need. This is the main menu page, and there's just a button that says press here to begin. When I press it, it gives me the option of powering up the projector or booting up the system without using the projector. For this video, we'll click yes. And when I click yes, the projector powers on and the screen comes down out of the ceiling. That whole process takes about a minute, a little bit more than a minute, and the screen on the touch panel is going to just be in a warming up mode while that happens. Uh, so while that's happening, we'll go ahead and take a look at the buttons on the side here, and they're going to control our lighting in the room. There's five buttons, which are the five presets for our lights. Lights all on. The two lecture settings, which are the lecture with the whiteboard lights on and without the whiteboard, whiteboard lights on. The theater setting. And then, of course, lights all off is the bottom one. There are a couple of other ways to uh, handle the lighting in the room. There's a controller over here on the wall that has five buttons on it that stand for the five, same five presets we just went through. And the doors uh, also have a main on-off switch on them. Uh, right here behind the keyboard tray, we have a wireless microphone. And I'm going to go ahead and pull that out. And on the top of the wireless microphone is an on-off switch. If I switch that on, the microphone will come to life, and anything I say into the microphone is going to be reinforced in the room there. And if I need to adjust that volume up and down, uh, now that our touch panel has been booted up in the bottom right hand corner here, it says audio control. When I press that, I get a couple of a uh, few different audio options here, and on the left hand side is our wireless microphone option. Turn the volume up, turn it down, mute it. Uh, and when I get it to the right setting, then I can press back, and that'll get me back to the main menu. When I'm done with the wireless microphone, I want to make sure and flip that power switch back to the off position, because the battery will completely drain, even if you're not using it, if it's in the on position. Okay, so everything's booted up, and we have the lights and the microphone all set up. And so now we're going to show something on the screen for the class. Up at the top here is our source select area. And right now you can see by the highlighted blue button there that the PC is the source that's selected. Uh, so then our PC is what's going to show up on the screen for us. Uh, in order to log on to the PC, this PC is already logged into, but your username is going to be the first part of your UWL email address. And then your password is going to be your UWL net ID. So you can go ahead and log on to your individual account and get onto the computer. The next sources we have are our two different laptop sources. Uh, we have our regular or analog laptop, which uses a VGA connection, and our digital, or it's labeled HDMI laptop connection. And all the cables needed for those connections are right here in the cable cubby. There's also a power supply in there, so you don't have to rely on battery. You can plug right into the desk. Uh, if I bring my laptop up, I have a VGA connection on my laptop, so I'll go ahead and take that cable and I'll plug it into the VGA port on my laptop. Then I'll take the audio cable and I'm going to plug that into the headphone jack on my laptop. And then I'm all set, ready to go. So I come over to the panel and I press the button labeled laptop. And then my laptop should show up on the screen for us. If it doesn't, it's probably because your mode isn't set correctly, your display mode. Uh, you can go into your control panel to change that or the shortcut would be to hold down the function button and hit the F8 key. Mine brings up a nice little menu there that gives me the different options. Yours might go through automatically, so you might have to tap that F8 key a couple times. I choose the duplicate mode so that whatever is showing on my laptop is going to be duplicated up on the screen for us. The next thing over on our list here is the Blu-ray button. When I press the Blu-ray button, it brings up the, the screen for the different controls of the Blu-ray DVD player. Uh, on the left here are our play and our stop and those types of buttons. On the right hand side is our navigation and our menu buttons. The full screen video button, if I press that, it's just going to give us a bigger screen so we can preview what we're doing. When I press back, it will get me back to the main part here. The Blu-ray player is located right here on the right side of the teacher station, right underneath the document camera there. You can use the front panel controls as well if you wanted to do that. And I'll also note that you can play your regular DVD movies in here. They don't have to be a Blu-ray. DVD in order to play on there. It's also a good time to mention the volume. Uh, since Blu-ray is selected, if I turn the volume up and down, you're going to tur turn the volume of the Blu-ray player up and down. 
When the PC was selected, the volume would have adjusted the PC. So whatever you have selected at the top is the only audio you're going to hear. So that's the audio and the video are tied together. The next thing we have is the document camera. It's on the right-hand side of the teacher station here. On the back is the power, the power switch. When I press the button there, the light blinks green. When that becomes a solid green, we'll know it's ready to go. Our advanced functions are up here by the camera. You can zoom in and out using the little wheel. Uh, your manual and autofocus and your other options are here. You'll want to leave that on autofocus unless you're doing something very active underneath. Once the document camera is ready to go, you can come over to your source select and hit the document camera button. And then after the images sync up between the document camera and the projector, uh, whatever you do on the document camera is going to show up on the screen for you. The last button we'll talk about is the auxiliary button here. If I press that auxiliary button, we get a little sub-menu here giving us the option of S-Video or composite video. And those connections are also right in the cable cubby where our laptop connections were. If you had a camera or an iPod or something like that that you wanted to plug in, you could bring the cables in and plug that in and choose which mode you wanted to use and then you could use your device to control what the students are seeing. On the left hand side of our touch panel here we have some more hard coded buttons. We have a projector power button that will power down the projector and if you don't want to uh, shut down the whole system. We also have a video mute button, which will put a black screen or mute the video without powering the system down. And that can be real handy if you use it in conjunction with the screen up and screen down button here. You could mute the video and put the screen up, and then you'd be able to use the whiteboards that are behind the screen. And then when you're done, you could hit the screen back down and turn the video back on. And then you wouldn't have to go through the minute it takes to power down and the minute it takes to power back up in order to get your uh, class moving on. There's a main mute button here, and the bottom button is our help button. When I press that button, the names and phone numbers of a couple of the members of our Academic Technology Services staff show up. Uh, if you ever have problems during a class, those are the numbers to call, and um, we'd be more than happy to assist you as soon as possible. I'll click OK to get out of that, and then I'll note that the last thing on the bottom here is a button that's labeled System Off. When I press that, it gives me a choice of uh, canceling out of it or going ahead and powering down the system. And when I press that power down button, it's going to power off the projector and raise the screen. It's very important to remember to do that after your class because that'll save the life of the projector bulb for us and help with our uh, maintenance issues. So if you ever have any questions or concerns, make sure you call the Academic Technology Services staff and we'd be happy to help. Thank you.